Hello, today I'm going to be covering sample warping in Ableton. There's a few different modes Ableton has. Beats, tones, texture, repitch, complex, and complex pro. I'm going to quickly go over what each one of these are and when you might want to use these. Right off the top is beats. Let's say I want to stretch out these drums. You kind of hear this like choppy sounding effect on it that um, kind of messes up the groove a bit. But what you can do is keep preserve right here on the transients and then click this right here. So this little arrow and line thing means the computer's gonna pick each transient and it's going to like shape it more and see now I'm kind of like trimming it with this thing right here it's still a little choppy but mostly because as you can see right here is a transient so as I loop it through it's grabbing those couple transients and then when it comes back it's going to that one so we can very easily fix this by doing that because the drummer in this sample is just playing a little bit off the beat. That's much better. It's one way to use beats mode, and then what you heard in the beginning was this weird way of... Oops. That's pretty cool too. It kind of sounds like a slapback delay. Um, and that's going to like play the samples forwards and backwards and... This little bar right here is just how extreme. This is 100%. And that's, I guess, none. But that's basically the shaping of the transient. And then real quick, there's also this one bar thing. So each bar, it's going to play the sample and then slowly cut it out, depending on how much you adjust this. And then there's quarter notes. That sounds great, too. So now we're going to get into tones warp mode and it serves for stretching material with a more or less clear pitch structure such as vocals, monophonic instruments, and bass lines. So right here I have this single vocal sample and it provides a rough control over the average grain sized use. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is larger grain sizes help avoid artifacts that can occur when the pitch contour is unclear, but the trade-off can be audible repetitions. So right down here is the grains, uh, grain size, and you'll hear it kind of like repeats over. It's like an echoey delay sound, and the more, like you'll make it really small. See so here, really small works well. And I have a good visual representation of what's going on. So I have this granular synthesizer, and then what this is doing is it's playing individual grains, and that's what's going on with the tone warp mode. You can kind of see here. Really ambient things or monophonic sound signals are really good with tones if you're trying to make it sound smooth you know you can almost hardly tell here with the small grain size see the more the pitch changes the more you kind of hear the grains there's a give and take here as you like warp and stretch things more next we have texture and texture is supposed to be better for polyphonic sound sources and that means multiple sounds going on at once so chords or if you have two instruments playing at the same time that's when you're going to want to use texture and so you have these two variables to control here grain size and flux so let's say i want to pitch this four down and then stretch it out
here, you can adjust the grain size. I kind of like it wider here. Now flux, I could not tell you specifically what that is doing. I did a little bit of researching and it seems like it's randomizing the grain size a little bit. So more flux means it's a little more choppy. Or I could have that backwards. Um, it's one of the other, I really can't tell just listening to it right now. But um, texture is a really cool mode for experimenting. Next is repitch. And repitch is basically just stretching it out as if you were playing it on a record player. So here I'm going to grab the sample and stretch it out. And you can hear it's just pitching down and down. Now it can be kind of hard to control the actual pitch here, so use that at your own discretion. I honestly almost never use repitch. I'm sure there's some application out there for it, but um, I'm not really sure. It's fun to mess with, you know? Maybe if you took a whole song and used this warp mode to pitch it down. So next is going to be complex. Complex is going to be the most CPU intensive warp mode. Complex is the most CPU intensive warp mode. It's good for entire songs or samples that have a lot going on at once. I like this mode a lot. I use this one often. It's just really utilitarian. It's clean and I can kind of stretch samples out really far. And it sounds pretty good. See, that's double timed. This is probably going to be the warp mode you're going to be using the most. It just sounds really clean and good. Uh, the next one is going to be Complex Pro. Now this one is really interesting because you can control the formats and the envelope. Complex Pro, I use this for vocals a lot because of the formants. Now, let's say I have this sample here. And I have to pitch it up four semitones. Now, it's going to sound kind of bizarre right off the bat with 100% formants. So you can kind of knock those down. So as I kind of like wiggle it back and forth, you can hear the what the formants is doing. It's kind of affecting the like the mouthiness. So kind of where the emphasis is in the mouth. And now if you're going to pitch a vocal up, you're going to want a lower envelope. It kind of helps the algorithm and vice versa. If you're going to pitch it down, you're going to want a higher envelope. So yeah, formants can sound really weird sometimes. More often than not, you're going to want them down almost all the way. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any more questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.